The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money for their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed many with oil who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. In this reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, Jesus sends out the twelve, and then the twelve, of course, are the, become the apostles except for one. And they're, they're all to be the, the priests, our first bishops. And he sends them out to drive out many demons and to cure the sick. So that's what they do. They drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. So that's verse 13, chapter 6 of Mark. This is the anointing of the sick. This is actually the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. So when you get people ask you, where is that in the Bible? Right here. Mark chapter 6, verse 13. The priest went out there and he anointed them. So that's why it's so important for us to be anointed when we're sick. If you have parents that are sick, they're on their deathbed, Get them anointed. It's so important to get them anointed. There's a lot of things that happen. There's two main things that happen when we get anointed. The first thing is right here in the Bible. Healing. The anointing of the sick, through the anointing of the sick, you actually can get healed. And you, can, you can get healed physically. That actually still happens today. Many people actually get healed from the anointing of the sick by a priest. A lot of people don't know that. You know, in the old days we had what they call extreme unction. You know, the last rites, we used to always call it, right? So I, I, when 
I'd come into a room and people were like, no, no, don't let the priest come in. It means I'm dying. <laughs> and no, it doesn't mean you're dying because you could be healed. It means maybe God's going to heal you. So healing does actually happen. And I've experienced that. Healing happens during the anointing of the sick. The second part, the other part of healing is also, because see, sometimes it doesn't happen, but there's a spiritual healing that takes place during the anointing of the sick. A lot of times what will happen is when somebody's dying, maybe somebody's dying of cancer, what happens many, many times is that they'll get well for like two weeks. And that gives them the ability to make amends with people that they need to make amends to. Maybe if there's something in their own heart where they have a hard time forgiving somebody in the past, the anointing prepares them to see Jesus so that they can be healed, and then when they go see Jesus, they're at peace. So now they're ready for heaven. If you've got unforgiveness in your heart, you're not ready for heaven. So God gives you that grace to be healed spiritually. Or maybe if somebody's angry at you, and then, you know, so that's why a lot of times, like, they're dying, they get anointed, the family comes around them. They get better. They are able to have those conversations to be at peace with family members, friends, and anybody else uh, who maybe have grudges against them or that person may have a grudge, grudge against them. You know, so, so there's a, it's an incredible time of healing. So I see that, I'll, actually, I'll see that a lot, actually. I'll anoint somebody, then all of a sudden, like, they've been in their deathbed and they're breathing hard and then all of a sudden I anoint them by the time I, I go they're sitting up having conversations with family members and then they have their last two weeks of peace reconciling and peace with their family and then they're able to go and see Jesus at peace you know we're all going to die we all are going to have to come to our last two breaths in our life knowing we're going to be dead and there's always that question, how is Jesus going to judge me? I don't care who you are. You're always going to die with that question on your mind. And that's anointing of the sick helps us to be reconciled with that. The other part that the anointing of the sick does is it forgives us our sins. It forgives us our sins. In um, James chapter 5, 1 James chapter 5, it's actually part of the ritual of the anointing of the sick. And it quotes from James. It says, Lord Jesus, you said to us through your apostles, let the priests pray over them with oil, anointing them with, an oil, with the oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick persons, and the Lord will raise them up. Imagine that. Let the priests pray over them. If anybody is sick among you, let them send for the priests of the church and let the priests pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. That's the anointing of the sick. The prayer of faith will save the sick persons. Salvation. Save. Salvation comes from anointing, too. It's a means by which God gave us to get to heaven. Because God knows, some of us, we just need our last-ditch effort to be saved. And God opens that door for us. By golly, don't ever deny yourself or ever deny anybody else that ability to be saved. But... To receive the anointing, you have to become Catholic. You have to be Catholic. You have to be baptized in the Catholic Church. You have to accept the teachings of the Church. Salvation comes through anointing too. It's right there in Scripture, First James chapter five, at the very close to the end of that book. That's awesome. All sins, their sins will be forgiven them. It says in there. Your sins will be forgiven. The anointing of the sick has the power to wipe out your sins. Isn't that awesome?
God gave us that gift. You know, don't deny yourself that. Don't reject it. Don't reject God's grace. He's always there to help you. Always there. So that's an awesome gift that we have. The Lord will raise them up. Now, in order to get anointing of the sick, there's a problem. We need priests. Let the priests pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. We need priests. I need a priest. When I die, I'm going to need a priest. I can't anoint myself. I, I need a priest to go to confession to myself. I can't hear my own confession. I need priests. We need priests. Because God gave us the ability. You see, God's so power. God is so powerful, he conquered our sins. Even the sins of a priest. So the anointing of the sick, the holiness of that sacrament, isn't dependent on me. On me. That should give you a lot of that just should make you happy because if you're waiting for me to become holy, for the, there to be merit and anointing, you'd be waiting a long time. I'm a sinner. Pope Francis is a sinner. He, he says it himself. He needs God's grace. So who are priests? Well, priests are not cloned. We're not cloned. We come from families like yours. A priest would be somebody who sits in a pew. I mean, you wouldn't find a priest who's not sitting, who doesn't come to church at all and doesn't care about anybody else. Would you find them becoming a priest? No. It's somebody who's in the pew. Somebody who's with you. It's an average Joe. That who become a priest. I mean, look, look what, what Amos said. I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to, any, to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd, a dresser of sycamores. He was just average Joe. He wasn't somebody who's like floating around. It was just your average person. That's who God calls. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. We're not pretending to be perfect. We're all striving towards holiness. As they say in the big book, trudging our way to happy destiny. And that's what we're doing. We're helping each other trudge our way to God. That's what the church is all about. That's its purpose. And that's my purpose for you. To help you trudge your way to that happy destiny. That's awesome. So if you know somebody who would be a great priest, you see a young man, tell him, hey, you'd be a great priest. If you see a young woman, you'd be a great religious. Maybe some of these young men might be good religious too. We can be a brother. You know, the reason why my first inclination of being a priest, I, I didn't think about it until retrospect. My first inclination, idea that I was called to be a priest was seeing a sister in the pew praying. It was a sister that inspired me to become a priest. Sisters are awesome. Why are Catholic schools so expensive to go to today? It's because we don't have sisters in the schools teaching anymore. I know some people might say, well, God isn't calling those sisters anymore. It's just going to be new and it's going to be... No, baloney. That's from the father of lies. That's from the devil himself. No. God is calling sisters. He's calling brothers. He's calling priests. But people have denied it. People have stuffed the faith down. Heaven forbid if anybody actually lives the faith or strives for it or strives to help somebody else live the faith. So many mothers have denied young men the ability to go to the priesthood because they want to have grandchildren or the girls, because they want to have grandchildren. Don't do that. The spiritual children you get from religious and priests are much, much more. The priesthood is an awesome gift. I love hearing confessions. Why? Because I want to hear everybody's dirty things? No. Because I know that, that confessional, that one right there, 
and the one in the back is St. Mary's. That is the physical place where sins are forgiven, where grace conquers shame, where grace overcomes guilt. That is so awesome. Our God is good, and he wants to shower us with all these graces through the sacraments. Now, I ask you to just open up your hearts to receive his grace. Don't be afraid to be anointed when, you're, when your come, time comes. Or if you know somebody who their time comes, call for the priests. We used to have those cards we used to carry all the time. Carry one. I am a Roman Catholic. In case of emergency, call a priest. And by the way, for those maybe in the anointing of the sick, last-ditch effort, all blocks are pulled. If you're living in mortal sin, you can still get anointed and be forgiven of your sins. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Like, if you're on your deathbed, you know you're going to die. Maybe somebody's living an immoral life some way, somehow. They can ask for a priest and get anointed, and their sins are forgiven. Wow. Man, God is so good. And he gave that through Holy Mother Church. Man, the church is so good for us. The sacraments are so good for us. Encourage. Encourage people, young men and women, to the vocations. Sisters, brothers, priests. And allow yourself to receive God's grace.